We will discuss now about the antivirals uh, against influenza virus. Uh, human influenza causes a great pandemic and you know there are a lot of uh, influenza that has been transmitted from uh, different species to human being. Uh, number one is avian influenza which is which is uh, which caused a very big pandemic and uh, you know this uh, virus um, involves in two important uh, genetic variations caused by genetic shift and genetic drift. So this picture, uh, this figure tells, uh, shows you uh, right from the absorption of the virus uh, to its budding and release. So you could see all the sequences right from here, absorption, and uh, through this it comes again and then starts budding out um, by the lysis of the cell. So initial absorption is by binding of this virus with the sialic acid receptors that you see over here which are there in the uh, eukaryotic cell. So the influenza virion are internalized uh, from the external surface inside the cell through a receptor mediated endocytosis that you would see here. So this attachment is the initial function. The virus comes inside through endocytosis and you can see a vesicle formation within which the virus is there. So this endocytosis produces the endosome and because of the low pH of this endosome they actually trigger the fusion of virus uh, and the endosomal membrane. So ultimately because of the influx of the hydrogen ions that happen there uh, through the M2 channel you know they actually release the viral RNA into the cytoplasm. So now what happens is there is uncoating and there is a release of this RNA into the cytoplasm. So the first intervention to stop this viral um, influenza virus is the derivatives called adamantiamine which is called as adamantan and these derivatives can stop this attachment lysosomal uh, endosomal release. Once they uncoat and they produce, uh, the, the, they open the naked uh, nucleic acid material, which is RNA, they go from the cytoplasm to the nucleus. So now the RNA replication and the transcription occurs in the nucleus, as you see here. And this process can also be blocked by the important enzyme, which is called as the inosine 5 monophosphate dehydrogenase inhibitors. They can stop the replication of RNA and transcription. At the same time, you know, this viral RNA polymerase, since it's an RNA virus, RNA dependent RNA polymerase, or RNA dependent DNA polymerase can be inhibited by this RNA polymerase inhibitors, which can inhibit the viral RNA. And after this, you know, even though either it's by the cellular enzyme or by uh, the um, drug that actually inhibits the viral RNA, the stability of this viral messenger RNA and its translation into the protein can be prevented by the small interfering RNAs that are produced by the human cell. The small interfering RNAs or SI RNAs, we call it, are produced by the by this uh, the human cell to combat these kind of heterologous uh, infectious material which is nothing but the RNA. or if there is another intervention where you know once the nucleic acid is formed and you know every uh, late protein is being produced and the packaging takes place and finally after packaging the budding of this virion they occur from the cytoplasm where the neuraminidase inhibitors can be used to block the release of these newly formed virions. So these are the various methods by which the influenza virus can be stopped and there are, there are a lot of uh, drugs which focus on different uh, steps uh, in the process of infection and pathogens. Number one is the, the drug which we saw amantamine or the amantidin. So this is a uh, yeah, proprietary drug which is also known as uh, Symmetrel. 
okay they are nothing but the drug with the, the three ringed symmetric amine as you see here and you know they specifically block the m2 protein ion channel okay and they uh, stop uh, the, the uncoating uh, of this particular viral nucleic acid and they are very effective against influenza a but the thing is you know this drug has to be given within 24 to 48 hours of infection and you know in susceptible patients uh, we anticipate that this infection infection should would come and you know it is given as a prophylaxis and this drug has to be administered for 10 days and uh, you know there are a lot of derivatives of this particular uh, amantamine or uh, amantan or amantidin, okay, such as the rimantidin, where, you know, they can't cross the blood-brain barrier and this is the primary drug that could be very much used for influenza. So the picture that I'm just showing you here is the drug that actually affects the, um, the attachment of the um, Thing in the cell membrane. So recent antiviral drugs um, have to pass through um, four different phases up before it's getting marketed and it's a, there's a preclinical phase. The phase one is a lab animal, phase two is a is a cohort a controlled study where we give it to human volunteers and phase three we give it for a large human volunteers and finally if, if the efficacy is approved you know they are being marketed so the new antiviral drugs like xanamivir for is given for influenza a and b lanimivir okay it is given in in japan and uh, you know the derivatives of uh, laninamivir is also given in the us and you know if they are the derivatives are also given for human rhinoviruses and also for respiratory synthetic virus. You could see here, you know, there are only two marketed antiviral drugs for influenza. Number one is Xanamivir, you know, which has passed the treatment and prophylaxis. And here is Laninamivir, which is also used for treatment and prophylaxis. So antiviral candidates are tested in mass quantities. And these antiviral drugs generally have strange side effects and have a high toxicity because, you know, they will affect the healthy cells as well as any pathogenic drug you know viruses evolve and develop immunity to these drugs which is pretty common and thus we need new drugs every time okay this is a very big bottleneck in producing an antiviral because technically from the concept of a drug to the marketing of a drug you know it involves a lot of duration as well as a lot of money that is involved in making research uh, involving in research development of this uh, drug for commercialization so the weapons of choices of antiviral drug is given here anti-herpes anti-influenza antiretroviral these are the names uh, you uh, you are not supposed to uh, buy hard them but you know you should you should know a couple of them so what i would say is you know anything that that ends with vir is a is a is an antiviral drug or anything that's uh, uh, ending with uh, what is that mm -hmm like the idoxyuridine or tramantidine kind of a thing or zilovudine so they are also antiviral drugs so the other example is the tamiflu that is given for the influenza a and b okay recently sold in different 40 different countries to battle avian influenza and you know this drug prevents uh, the matured uh, viruses because this is a neuraminidase inhibitor okay as i've told you neuraminidase inhibitors have two different functions number one through during the entry and number number two is during the exit and this neuraminidase enzyme is found on the viruses and which cleaves the sialic acid in the initial attachment of the virus to the host the next one is the acyclovir okay it's used initially for herpes infections okay the person who actually created that Jetrod Ilian uh, has been awarded the Nobel Prize in 1988. This is a nucleoside analog. We have seen about nucleotide, nucleoside analog where these drugs um, f mimic the nucleosides and they go exactly fit into the nucleosides. So when the replication proceeds, it doesn't proceed after this analog. 
so the conclusions viruses of the future you know with further understanding of the viral genome various viral receptors and you know, antiviral drugs are going to be more potent and effective but at the same time you should know that viruses also change uh, their originality every time and uh, understanding the various processes uh, within the cell is also one important thing that is currently going on in viral research such as the hiv and antiviral drugs are very experimental as of now because you know new process of synthesis have to be discovered where they have to be pretty fast and also the phase two trials are really bottleneck so the next uh, uh, sub topic that we are going to deal is on the vaccines so vaccines is a common name for both viruses as well as the bacterial infection so more than 500 infectious species have been reported and you know 17 has been recommended for vaccination we have aids vaccine malaria vaccine okay even vaccine for a common cold rhinovirus and uh, these are the sequence of events in the influenza vaccine history so we have a sequence right from 1945 okay the vaccine was produced in a small scale civilian vaccine was approved and when you just come through and through the the vaccine finally the 2012 quadrivalent um vaccine is being produced and it is being licensed uh, in the us in the 2012 and it 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 came to availability in the market by 2013 so these are the very important pioneers that you should know and uh, their work in the um, in the discovery and in the uh, work research work of vaccine production number one is edward jenner so smallpox vaccination max taylor it's of the q yellow fever here and morris hillman measles vaccine and william park diphtheria toxins and diphtheria vaccines jonas salk produced the salk vaccine for polio and louis pasteur for the rabies so when we see the sequence in 1908 polio vaccine was first discovered and you know since hiv the year the first uh, vaccine came into existence is in 1983 so number of years elapsed you could see more than 25 years so vaccine development you know started from smallpox you know earlier in 1800s you know where you know the from the cowpox the material was inoculated into the human being and then came the birth of immunology with the cox postulate and production of anti toxins by adding toxins to chemicals like formaldehyde tissue culture vaccines okay recombinant vaccines different delivery systems like you know nano vaccines and adjuvants for delivery many things came into existence in the vaccine development and this is a uh, overall chart to tell you the timeline in which all these vaccines have been produced so how a vaccine works even though it's going to be a very complicated structure you could see you could slowly read it after uh, the class but you know there are two arms one is mediated by the b cells another one is mediated by the t cells 